My name is Carmen Cicero. I'm a painter, I'm an academic, and I'm a musician. I started, um, uh, my life as a musician was the first, my first uh, intense interest. And I studied with the, probably the best teachers in New York. Uh, uh, my first teachers were very bad. My second teacher was a man named Charles Thetford, who played uh, clarinet with the uh, Radio City Music Hall uh, Orchestra. My second teacher was uh, Joe, Joe Allard, a legendary uh, clarinet and saxophone teacher, played with the Tos Toscanini and many great orchestras. And we were together for, I don't know, about eight years. Uh, I was first a concert clarinetist, and I wanted to be uh, a played with concert orchestras until I saw Benny Goodman and Artie Shaw. <laughs> and then I wanted to be Benny Goodman or Artie Shaw and have a big band and all the gals around me. Uh, uh, but uh, then, um, oh, a terrible thing happened. I had a fire. I lived in Englewood, New Jersey, and I had a fire and my, both my studio and my apartment burned to the ground, taking with the fire my wonderful clarinet. I used to call it my Stradivarius clarinet because Joe Allard, who was famous enough to go to France and go to the factory that made um, clarinets and choose a wonderful clarinet for me. Just wonderful. And that burned down in the fire and so did my, all of my instruments. And after the fire, I uh, practically gave up playing. I know it sounds peculiar. I remember seeing uh, a documentary about the great violinist Joshua Bell, who had a problem uh, with not having a violin that played well and uh, a lost interest in playing. And so that happened to me. <coughs> uh, but somehow, I don't remember exactly how, Someone gave me an alto sax, a very good alto saxophone, uh, a Selmer uh, alto, and uh, I, I started to practice and I've got once again interest in, in, in music and now it was mainly jazz that I was interested in. And a very interesting thing happened to me. Uh, I was going to have a show at the uh, Montclair Museum and I was asked, I said, you know, I, I'm a, a musician and I play with very good musicians, uh, which I can talk about in a moment. And I said, I'll play a concert and we'll have a show. Oh, that's fine. And so I, but then it dawned on me that I wasn't really in shape. And so I had to uh, make up my mind to, uh, there was about six months before the show opened at the Montclair Museum. So I said, I, I have six months to really get into shape. So I started to practice, and I practiced one hour a day, two hours a day, three hours a day. Next thing you know, I was practicing six hours a day. And a very peculiar thing happens when you play that much. Uh, it affects the way you think about life. It affects the way you think about music. It, what you realize is, Things that you thought were impossible to do musically, you find yourself capable of doing them. The kinds of, uh, <clears throat> uh, it's hard to explain musically, but musical ideas that were very difficult to articulate, you find yourself being able to articulate these things. But nonetheless, I hadn't been, I hadn't been playing with any musicians, which is important. So on the day of the concert, and the people that were, that were playing with me were excellent musicians. The pianist was Mike Melillo. He played eight years with Phil Woods, played with Sonny Rollins. The drummer played with, uh, played with Stan Getz, and he played with uh, um, that English pianist, uh, Marion McPartland, for years. He was, uh, they were all superb musicians. And at the, uh, when I, I was actually terrified 
because here I was, hadn't played in six months, uh, uh, sitting in with musicians who were top of their game. There's an expression, they could swing right off. That means you tap off four and you hear artistry. And so it was one, two, three, four, and I heard, I was, ah, oh, the sound. Because good musicians have good instruments. And when they have good instruments, the sound that the instruments themselves produce is excellent. The bass player has an excellent bass. The drummer, I remember talking to Glenn, Glenn Davis. He said, oh, I have 50 cymbals. 50 cymbals, that's a lot of cymbals. And trying to find the right kind of sound. And so, and of course I had, I knew what a good instrument was with my Stradivarius clarinet. And so when you hear the sound, of course they had a, a, a Steinway piano, when you hear this all and they know how to integrate the sound, which many musicians don't know how to do, uh, it was uh, very, uh, very exciting. And I played and played and uh, at the end of the concert, uh, they talked to me as if I was one of them, which was very, <laughs> I was very rewarded by that. But they were doing things that, uh, I, I wasn't familiar with, but my musical instincts carried me away, uh, and it, I could do it just using my, for, uh, it's hard to explain, but sometimes I would come to the middle of the tune, and they would play just what classical musicians call an ostinato, which is one bass note, which is repeated, boom, 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 to boom, boom, and that becomes a stretch of eight bars. Well, I'd never done that before, but hearing it, it seemed very natural and I improvised on it and everything went along fine. And it was a momentous day in my life as a musician. Of course, I also had, <laughs> I had a show of, uh, of collages, one man so of collages at the museum. So it was a funny integration of both of these arts and it was a very exciting uh, moment in my life.